warmest of greetings to you and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching, where we help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science, storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen for your children to become amazing and successful human beings. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me this week is... Hi, I'm Bex, and I'm a primary school teacher from Cambridgeshire. I've experienced teaching across the age range, being a deputy head, and I'm also the curriculum and teaching and learning lead, and I have the privilege of training and releasing the next generation of teachers as well. And today we are exploring learning outcomes in music with this this week's folktale from Japan. You can listen to the story by downloading our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, epictales.co.uk, for the Underwater Kingdom. There you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you sign up as an epic educator, you'll also get a copy as an ebook or paperback illustrated by Winnie the Witch's very own Corky Paul, as well as the full audiobook for you to download at any time, and even some tips for telling the story yourself. Right now, though, let's continue our discussion with Bex here by getting all musical with Hiroshima. How are we going to do this then, Bex? Well, I'm, I'm again, obviously, I'm, I'm going to mainly use the sea, but also think about Japanese music as well. So we'll start with the sea, okay. because that seems to be the, the common thread that runs through my ideas um, for this story. <laughs> so really thinking for our younger children, so our reception to year two children, thinking about creating a composition about the sea. So um, thinking about they would need to hear the sea, they'd need to um, have a look at how it moves, they'd need to experiment with different instruments. So with your early years children, you can obviously set up um, a part of your continuous provision, could be a music station where they're making um, instruments to make the sea sounds. They could maybe make some shakers or some and just experiment with lots of different things. There doesn't have to be instruments as well, maybe pots and pans. I'm sure that your office team Mm -hmm. would be delighted when you get those out. (laughs) Um, I don't know why, but early years outdoor areas seem to always be near the office. But so lots and lots (laughs) of experimentation with the different sea sounds. Um, In year one, in year two, they start to look at tuned and untuned percussion instruments as well as part Mm. of their music curriculum. So which of those would be best for us to use to create our sea composition and then think about creating in groups. So again, that collaborative teamwork, um, listening to some piece of music about the sea and then trying to create their own sea compositions and how are they going to record it? Are they going to record it in pictorial forms? So like when we need to play the xylophone or the glockenspiel, how are we going to record it? How, it, how are they going to notate it? Yeah, how are they going it? to note it? So, so that's yeah. moving up into like the year two. Um, how are we going to write down mm. what we actually need to do without having to remember it because we need to remember it week from week as we're building up. Yeah. And then like parents and carers and children love a performance so if you have to record (laughs) and put on your website or your blog your c and symphony that would parents and carers would just love to see it as well as the children i'm sure would love they love a reason to perform a reason to do something um at the end Mm -hmm. so if you can't have people in then maybe getting out there um virtually you know this is making me think of um what we were talking about right at the start with Hiroshima that rest area that oh, underwater yeah. rest area you could put some of your underwater inspired instruments there couldn't yeah. you and and some of the art that was maybe created after all the lesson ideas we came up with yesterday sticking those into the rest area and just really building up that theme and helping the well helping the children feel that they've got their own stamp of ownership yeah. on it as well that's going to make it even more important to them isn't it definitely and i think every opportunity you get like if whatever story or you're looking at actually getting the work that children are doing up on the walls they can remember what they've done and really own the story so this your uh, assume story is so amazing and it's so visual like there mm. it's gonna your classroom is gonna look amazing and um, with all the children's <laughs> learning so and sound amazing yeah and sound brilliant too hopefully um as long as not too many squeaky recorders um so then <laughs> thinking about uh, the music curriculum in key stage two i would probably play them some um some music that relates to the sea so i was thinking about the the titanic theme tune was the first one that came or the soundtrack was the first one that came into my mind so even uh, okay. playing them a little bit of the because there's one of the um songs i think is called sounds of the sea mm. and just get playing them some music 
that maybe they can try and recreate and then use that knowledge. Um, I've, I really enjoy giving them a bit of um, a film or a, um, a trailer and getting them to create the music that goes behind it if you see what I mean mm, so yeah. giving them a piece of a section of music from Titanic as the Titanic's traveling through the water or getting them to get to do a little bit of a scene from the Little Mermaid where like Sebastian and Flounder are swimming around like just and they represent what they think should go over the top of that um so they, they create the yeah, music, yeah. They, so they don't create the imagery that goes on top of the music. They could create the imagery that goes on top of the music, but I start from a place that, because that would be a little bit, they'd have to do their, that would probably come into some computing and back to your the art that we looked at oh, okay. yesterday. But mm-hmm. I give them a, um, a section of film and they create their music to go over the top of it. So they score yes. it. Yeah. And, and they, Fantastic. they really, really love it. So that's... That's definitely what I would do with our with our older children. And then if you had time and you had the technology and you had some children who were really up for it, you could even create the art to go behind it that they and um, they played along mm-hmm. to. So um or the or the short um short film um using some mm-hmm. computing software. But computing's for another day. I didn't have many computing ideas, so <laughs> And would you look at any of the, the Japanese influences? Oh, yes. I think that it's really, really important and part of immersing the children in, in the cultures. So when we were talking about um, geography and then history um, a few days mm. ago, actually just really thinking about um, about Japanese music, what makes it different, what instruments can we hear, what do we know, what don't we know, what timings it mm. Um, is the music in? What does it remind us of? Is it telling a story? So really, like just listening to some Japanese music and then investigating it even more. And I think, again, you can do that from very early on in your early years to classrooms right up into your year six children. You just look at a bit more detail. So you look at the pulse and the pitch and the and the duration of the music and whether they're using mm-hmm. low sound. Like um, you just look at more complex Part, you pick unpick it, I guess, the tapestry of the music um, in a greater depth when you're working mm. with the older children. And I think maybe if you were going to have a Japanese underwater feast as part of, of the end point of your... Um, I mean, I, I like food, so I think it would be good to have a, a an underwater feast at the Dragon Palace as part of our Japanese culture immersion. Um, they'd ov- mm. obviously need some music, so maybe we could create our own Japanese music as well as our own yeah. underwater see music as well definitely well you like food and i like music so, so that this is definitely going to be a feast we can both go to <laughs> very good <laughs> i think checking the um the sort of instruments that they would have mm. in japan and the sort of sounds that they create could also be a good way going back a couple of days to that geography history set of learning mm. ideas that you had because um even though um the modern music that comes out of japan is going to sound very modern you know you, you it's the sort of thing that you could easily hear in uh, a, a, an American or a, a British or a European nightclub as well, I suppose. Um, they still have some of their own cultural influences going into them. So they will mm. still have um, motifs played on their own instruments. So being able to trace how music is also geographically located is a really fascinating one for your children, yeah. I'm sure. They'd re- I think they would really, really enjoy that and comparing Japanese music to music now and and, and like just yeah. explore, I think just exploring as well the makeup of a song, whether it's verse, chorus, verse, chorus or a bridge or whatever it is. Mm. So, yeah, I think it would just be, yeah, just fascinating. That's all we have time for today, folks. If you try out any of these ideas, or if you'd like us to help you teach a topic you are soon to cover with your young learners, please let us know on social media using at Teach Happily, or leave us a review using your favourite podcast app. Please also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start a story-led revolution in classrooms around the world so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective, memorable and enjoyable all at the same time. Tomorrow, Hiroshima will help us teach religious education. But right now, it only remains for us to say cheerio and we hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio! Cheerio! And And we we hope hope to hear your story soon. soon.